Jack Benny program. Say, it must have been a big party Mr. Benny had. Oh, it was, it was. He invited all his friends. Were his uh, neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, here? No, Mr. Benny invited them, but they couldn't come. They both had pneumonia. Isn't that unusual for both of them to have pneumonia at the same time? No, they sat out in the rain all night long to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not make quite so much noise with the dishes, Roy. There's a reporter in the den interviewing Mr. Benny about his career. Oh, a reporter, huh? Say, Rochester, didn't Mr. Benny change his name when he went into show business? Yeah. What was it before he changed it? Let me see. I can't remember what it was. Was it Conrad Hilton? <laughs> oh, that. Uh, Mr. Benny took that as a souvenir while he was out to dinner. Oh, at one of Mr. Hilton's hotel. No, at his house. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Hello, Rochester. May I speak to Mr. Benny, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. Just a moment. And, um... Were you in any other Broadway shows, Mr. Benny? No, no, just those two. Oh, Excuse me, Mr. Benny, Miss Livingston's on the phone. Oh, oh, thank you, Rochester. I'll take it in there. Excuse me. Well, oh, certainly. Uh, Rochester, see that Mr. Kearns has some coffee, please. Yes, sir. Hello, Mary. Jack? Biggest surprise in the world for you. What are you doing right now? Well, there's a man here interviewing me. What's the surprise? Well, brace yourself. This morning I got a brand new Cadillac convertible. Mary, you, you got a, what? Why well, that cost over five thousand dollars. That's right. But how can you afford a car like that? Well, after all, Jack, I've been working for you for twenty years. <laughs> So last week, I went down to the bank, threw out all the savings I had, bought a raffle ticket, and won the car. Well, congratulations. And you know, it's fully equipped. It has radio, heater, and everything. All I have to buy is just a spare tire. Mary, you mean the car didn't come with a spare tire? No. Well, all the nerve. Well, that's awful. Well, what do you want me to do? Go get my dollar back? No. The next time you buy a raffle ticket, read it carefully. That way you, you won't get stuck. All right, all right, Jack. But I've got to go, and I'm so excited about driving my new car. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mary. I'm sorry for the interruption, Mr. Kern. Oh, that's quite all right. Now, where, where were we? Well, Mr. Benny, I think that while the sun is nice and bright, would you mind if we stepped out into your backyard so that I could get a few pictures of you around your pool? Oh, fine, fine. Uh, should I put on a coat? Oh, no, that shirt will photograph beautifully. <laughs> it is a nice shirt, isn't it? I've had it for some time. <laughs> it's guaranteed. Don't forget, we got to clean up that tray there, Roy. Yeah, okay. Uh-oh, Mr. Benny forgot to put his violin away. He sure hates it when dust gets on it. Shall I dust it? Well, I don't know. You think you might drop it? Of course not. Well, let me dust it. <laughs> Rochester, maybe Mr. Benny doesn't play so good, but you shouldn't take it out on his violin. It might be very valuable. It could be a Stradivarius or a Guarnerius. Do you know what kind it is? No. How do you tell? The maker's name's always on the inside. You can see it by looking through these holes. Let's see here. Yep, there it is. What does it say? The Pep Boys. <laughs> I'll get the tray, Rochester. Okay. 
Well, hello, Miss Wilson. All right. Hi, fellas. Hi, Rochester. Hi. Good to see you, boy. Come right in. Uh, Mr. Benny's out in the backyard taking pictures. I'll tell him you're here. Oh, no, no, Rochester. We don't want to see him. We want to see you. The sportsman and I have worked out a wonderful number, but we need another voice. You sing, don't you? Anything but soprano. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's your music. Look it over. Didn't do hard for you, is it? Let me see. I think I can handle this. Hey. Let's run over one else. Yeah, okay. let's do it. Huh? Come on, boys. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> It's so lonely when I dream about you Can't do without you That's why I dream about you If I could only put my arms about you Life would be so fair Tossing and turning in my slumber Holding you, it seems I give you kisses without number But only in my dreams I get so lonely when I dream about you Can't do without you That's why I dream about you If I could only put my arms about you Life would be complete Turn out good. Oh, I'm sure they will, Mr. Benny. Say, uh, Mr. Benny, I just thought of something that I'm sure would be very interesting to my readers. Now, what's that, Mr. Kern? Well, as a matter of fact, I thought of it when you were on the phone with Miss Livingston. Mm -hmm. Well, she's been with you for so many years that I think my readers would like to know how you first discovered her. Oh, when I first found Miss Livingston? That's right. How I discovered her? Well, I'll be glad to tell it to you. Sit down, Mr. Kern. Thank you. It's quite a long story. Uh, you see, it was in the 1930s. As a matter of fact, it was in the fall of 1932. I had just started in radio myself. And one day, I was just walking down the street. Here you are. Read all about it. Election campaign. Red right Eye. Here you are. Here you are. Read all about the election. Literary digest. Phoenix. Herman Hoover. Victory. <laughs> <laughs> Look, mister, this is your third time around the block. Now, why don't you buy a paper? Smart Alec kid. <laughs> hey, Buck. Match. Yeah. Yeah. Keep. Right. Hey, there's a nice shirt. Guaranteed, too. I think I'll go in and let him try and sell me one. <laughs> Just a gigolo everywhere I go. People know. I wonder where the shirt sale is. Where's the information desk? Ask. Now, pardon me. I saw a shirt in the window that I like. Are they having the shirt sale on this floor? I don't know. <laughs> Well, where is the shirt department? I don't know. <laughs> well, they are having a sale in this store, aren't they? I don't know. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake, if you don't know anything, what are you doing behind the information desk? I had to get behind something. I tore my pants. <laughs> Now, 
number four is the next elevator up, sir. Thank you. Hey, Bud. <laughs> Bud. Oh, it's you again. Come here a minute. What do you want? Where are you going? Upstairs. Which elevator are you taking? <laughs> Number four. Uh-uh. <laughs> Take number three. But why number three? It'll beat number four to the top by two and a half floors. <laughs> Number four is just about to go up. I know, but it's carrying too much weight. <laughs> well, see, I just want to get a shirt. That's all, you know, so I'll just, I'll just take number four. Okay. It's your dough. <laughs> I'd like to buy this shirt. I saw it in the window. Oh, a very wise selection, sir. This shirt is not only smart looking, but it's also guaranteed. Ah. Uh, what size do you wear, please? Well, it's uh, been so long since I bought a shirt, I, I forgot the size. Well, it's easy enough to find out. The size is marked on the inside of the collar. Uh, turn around, please. Yes, sir. wear a size 15. I noticed by the manufacturer's label that you've had that shirt a long time. Manufacturers? Yes, it was made by Hart, Schaffner, and Geronimo. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, Geronimo is in business for himself now. He makes arrow shirts. <laughs> this is your size, sir. That will be a dollar ninety-nine. Yes, sir. There you are. Two dollars. Mm -hmm. One ninety-nine out of two. Uh, it will take a few minutes to get your change. I'll wait. <laughs> Just a gigolo. Every place I go, people know the part I'm playing. Yum, bum, 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 dum, Hey, get that good-looking girl behind that hosiery counter. What a chicken. <laughs> After I get my change, I think I'll go over and date her up. Gee, Mary, I wish this day was over. Yeah, standing eight hours a day is just murder. Yeah, when I get home at night, my feet are all swelled up. Mine, too. I wish I was a secretary or a stenographer so I could sit down all day. I'd rather have big feet. <laughs> Say, Mary. That guy over there is trying to attract your attention. Get a lot of that straw hat he's wearing. Yeah, look what he's doing. He's got real talent. Oh, Sally, you say that about every guy that can wiggle his ears. <laughs> look at him. One at a time. Pardon me. 
Yes, ma'am. May I help you? I hope so. I'm looking for some extra strong silk stockings, size eight and a half. Extra strong? Yes. You see, I'm on the stage, and it's rather embarrassing if a stocking develops a run during a performance. Well, we have some new three-thread hose that are very strong. May I see? Certainly. <laughs> Someone trying to attract my attention. <laughs> Do you mind if I try these stockings on? Well, it's not customary, but there's a dressing room right back there. Thank you. Hey, Mary, don't look now, but that guy's coming over here. Oh, no. You want me to take care of it for you? No, I can handle it myself. <laughs> Look, he's walking like Theda Barra. Just a gigolo everywhere I go. Hello, kiddo. Where have you been all my life? Avoiding it. <laughs> hey, you're good. I like my tomatoes with a little spice. <laughs> Tell me, baby, what's your name? Mary. Mary what? Quite contrary? <laughs> oh, you beautiful doll. What's your full name? Look, mister, my name is Mary Livingston. I was born in Plainfield, New Jersey. I know I should be in pictures, but I'm very happy here at the May Company. Now, what do you want? <laughs> Wait a minute, baby, wait a minute. You've got me all wrong. Now, Mary, I'm not trying to These get These stockings fresh. seem to be all right. I hope they're going to be strong enough. Let me see. You get a lot of strange customers around here, don't you? Oh, you're just self-conscious. <laughs> now, look, Mary, I'm not trying to get fresh. I really like you. Now, look, if I hang around here until you get through working, can I take you home? No, I don't think so. Why not? I got a taxi outside. Look, mister, I've been out with taxi drivers before, and I'm, I'm not driving. <laughs> look, baby, don't you know who I am? No, thrill me. Well, hang on to your counter, because I'm going to. I'm Jack Benny. Well, what do you know? Hey, Sally, he's Jack Benny. Hey, Judy, he's Jack Benny. Hey, Peggy, he's Jack Benny. <laughs> Who's Jack Benny? I don't know. Who's Jack Benny? I don't know. Who's Jack Benny? I don't know. Ask him. Now, wait a minute, baby. You know who I am. I've been on the radio for three months. You ought to go out with me. Look, I've got a lamp that's been on the radio for three years. I don't go out with that either. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's good. You're fast on the trigger. What are you doing working in a department store? Look, at, I can put you on the radio. Hey, Sally. I knew this was coming. My mother told me there'd be guys like you, but I thought they'd be much younger. <laughs> You're too married. No, I'm serious, Mary. Look, you ought to be on the radio with me. You know, mister, as soon as I saw you sail that straw hat, I knew you were in show business. Sure, I used to do this in my vaudeville act. Hey, get a load of this. Watch this. <laughs> Gosh, that's wonderful. You think that's something? Get a load of this one. I'll really sail it this time.
Well, this I don't understand at all. Now, Mary, how about it? Ah, uh, Mary, why don't you make a date and go out with him? He seems like a lot of fun. Yes, yes, he does. Well... Oh, look at Mary. Now, look at I'm serious. If you go out with me, look at you go places. I can make a big star out of you. You're not kidding, are you? Of course I'm not kidding. Why don't you meet me tonight for dinner and we'll talk it over? Okay. There's a cafeteria right across the street. No cafeteria. Why, baby, you're going out with me, Jack Benny. Hey, Judy, who's Jack Benny? I don't know. I'm thinking, who's Jack Never Benny? mind. <laughs> you're going out with me tonight. A big star. I'll take you to the Brown Derby for dinner. Then we'll go dancing at the Coconut Grove. And I'll take you to a couple of swanky nightclubs on Sunset Strip. Why, baby, when you go out with me, money means nothing. Why, I'll take now, you... Pardon me, mister. Here's your penny change. <laughs> Okay, I'll meet you tonight at 6 o'clock in front of the store. Okay, baby. I'll be waiting. <laughs> it's the gigolo. <laughs> and that, that, Mr. Kearns, is the story of how I found Mary Livingston. Well, that certainly is very interesting, Mr. Benny. Well, I better be going now. I, I don't want to take up any more of your time. That's all right. I'll take you to the door. Oh, fine. Oh, by the way, your, uh, your butler uh, took my hat. Oh, oh. Uh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Will you please bring Mr. Kearns his hat? Yes, sir. You know, Mr. Benny, I'll bet Miss Livingston is really grateful to you. Well, yes, yes, she is. And after all, why shouldn't she be? When I found her, she was just a sales girl, and today, she drives a brand new Cadillac. Here's your hat, sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Kearns. Mr. Kearns, where did you get this hat? Well, I was in the store that day, too. I was wearing a derby. <laughs> well, what do you know? Just a minute. <laughs> feel being on the show tonight? Oh, it was a lot of fun, Jack. You know, I think it was kind of a cute story the way I found you at the May Company. Well, it was true. Yeah. You know, I don't want to brag, but uh, you've been doing very well since then. Well, uh... I mean, it was kind of lucky for you that way back in 1932, I happened to walk into the store and buy that shirt for $1.99. You want to know something, Jack? What? You remember when that clerk came over and handed you the penny change? Yeah. Well, wasn't there something kind of peculiar about that penny? <laughs> Looks all right to me. I knew he'd still have it. <laughs> well, good night, folks.